Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, first turn as Vanarus. So I've actually already record um, done this turn, but um, I didn't have recording software available when I did it because I was out of town. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the general things I did for this first turn. Typical messages, beginning there is chaos, now the wheel's turned again. Um, so I've got my Ormer, who I'm immediately going to... I blind moved into the water because uh, he is amphibious, so he can move into the water. None of my other troops can do that, so I'm having him just move in there. I trusted that um, whatever I can take there, I can take. Um, I prophetized my scout, um, and I believe for return I did Vanerusian Sages on repeat. I did five skin shifters, and the rest of the gold went into a herdman. So I believe that's what I did for recruitment. Um, and this guy, I just had chill out. I don't want him to blind expand. I want to see what's actually happening in the other squares, in the other provinces around me. But, um, yeah, that was pretty much it for turn one. I'll see you guys next turn. All right, welcome to turn two in our Vanarus playthrough. So, got a lot of proclamations. This is like a 30-player game, so pretty much most people are going to be prophetizing. Um, very first turn, and myself included. We've got two messages. Arcocephaly, I wish everyone the best of luck and a lot of fun. And Jotunheim, the heart can really... The heart can get really cold if all you've ever known is winter. Winter is coming. Okay. Arcocephaly, prophet of Justin... Phidias, prophet of Justin Noob. Despair of a Censor, the prophet of Ibring Death. Scalarius, Salmonius, or Salmonius, the Centurion. Prophet of Theodius the Fourth, damned emperor. Okay. Oh, Scalaria, Pythium, Lucumo, the Centurion, Prophet of Cal the Angelic, Uriu, Torrid, Heelbarch. I don't know how the fuck to say that. Uh, the Prophet of Ogon, Ulm, Iron Fetish, the commander of Ulm, shall be known as the Prophet of Raiju, Eater of Magic, Marignon. Charlemagne the Friar is the prophet of Puro Fuego. Tianji, Kai Wenji, the Imperial Consort, however already known as the prophet of Teju Gajua, Jagua, I guess say that. Machaka, Sami the Machaka Chief shall be known as the prophet of Mandla. Grimold the Cave Captain shall be known as the prophet of Cobra. Abyssia, Krokul the Warlord shall be known as the prophet of Fire. That one's awesome. I like that one. Kalem. Mazdrav Zagav, the Jordan, Storm General, shall be known as the Prophet of Birdie Num Num. Satis, Blash to the Commander of Satis, shall he ever be known as the Prophet of Anathema. Pangea, Pandaros, the Centaur Commander, shall be known as the Prophet of Green Thumb. Asphodel, Penator, the Carrion Centaur, shall be known as the Prophet of Moss Maw. Vanheim, Ran the Hearse, shall be known as the Prophet of Treadle. Vander Log, Deep D, the Bandar Commander, shall be known as the Prophet of Monkeys Like Me. Shinuyama, Masasuke, the Bakemono General, shall be known as the Prophet of Hanti Jama. Zabalba, Apeku, the Chalk Mooch Assassin, shall be known as the Prophet of Jughead. Atlantis, Igyad, the Shambler Chief, shall be known as the Prophet of Aquaman. Relay, Rifaria, the Scout, shall hereby be known as the Prophet of the Special One. Pelagia. Meander, the Pelagian captain, shall be known as the prophet of Neridius. Oceania. Messengers of the clouds, the Icky Seder commander, shall be known as the prophet of cloud. Oh. And East, Maloy, the Eastian commander, shall be known as the prophet of Gratilonius. So, oh, I, I skipped me. I somehow managed to skip a couple people. So, Asphodel, Danheim, we went over. Oh, you know what? I skipped Jotunheim. Chon, Snow, the Jotunheim shall be known as the Prophet of Leaf Song. Very Game of Thrones that you've got Jon Snow, which is like Jon Snow, and he was the guy who sent out the Winter is Coming message. That's pretty funny. And then, oh, there's me, Vanarus. Oh, I also went Game of Thrones on this one. What is dead may never die. The Scout shall here be known as the Prophet of Python the Third. <laughs> uh, so we had a battle. This was our expander. Spoiler alert: the unexpected, an unexpected event happened there, and it's got our flag on it. Spoiler alert: we won the battle, <laughs> but um. That flag would have been gray if we didn't win.
But uh, yeah, my dude's going in. I didn't script him or anything. He's just biting. Gets a few nom noms in there and they immediately flee. He's got a fear aura. I mean, there's not much to say about that. I I lucked out and got an insanely easy province. Hopefully, uh, every other problem will be that easy. Unexpected event, an unexpected event occurred. I got four air gems. That's cool. So let's actually take a look at our map. So I guess I want to keep uh, the um, I want to keep my pretender in the water. So this is really interesting because here is a negative candle. That implies um, a capital is nearby of probably an aquatic nation. Presumably this is not a capital, but um, there could be an aquatic uh, province. I'd assume in one of these three. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to think of that. Um, but as far as who to attack with Python, I'm gonna be really upset if I like lose Python immediately. But you know what? I'm a noob. I went into this. It's on my video descriptions. I'm a noob. I'm gonna lose this guy immediately. I said before, whenever I play with a snake, I always lose them. But I feel like I can probably take these guys. These guys, possibly. I guess I'm a little scared of a Kraken, but maybe it's uh, uncalled for. But I think what I'm going to do with Python, uh, I'm going to move him here. Have him take another water province. Let's see what we can recruit here. So we can do Shambler Chiefs and Shamblers and Atlantean Militias. So we can start building stuff on the water if we want. But um, probably the same deal there. Tritons and Sea Trolls can probably build Tritons there. See here would be interesting. I could probably build Triton Troopers and Shark Knights, but it's right next to an enemy, so I don't really want to mess around with that. But um, let's go to our land troops. So we got four provinces around us. I guess we got militia, heavy infantry, archers. That's kind of scary. Got 20 horse tribes. We got a throne with people on it, and we got this. And this seems like it's 20 with mostly militias and a couple of heavy cavalries. I feel like. Just to, just based on sheer number, I want to take this one. And also to let me m move on to this forest area, which I kind of want so I can build like forest mazes there, hypothetically. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to, first of all, let's move my troops. So I, I, I built a little Huskarl there. I've got a Huskarl, a Herdman, and five skin shifters. I'm just going to move them all into this melee uh, squad. I'm going to shift this melee squad a little bit forward, and because these guys are all melee troops, I'm going to have these guys hold an attack. Um, this will give my archers time to, uh, to fire. So the hotkeys I'm using to do this for hold an attack, I mouse over the orders, I press H. I can also, you can also make like a sub order, like a priority, shift C is closest, etc. You know, the fire, you can have it like fire archers for example, fire closest, shift A, shift C. F is for fire, but um, that's going to be my, my stuff. That's all I'm going to really do with them. Um, my commander, I'm going to have far back, far in the back, and I'm going to set his orders. I'm just going to have him hold and stay behind troops. I'm going to set this to control one. So I now I can have any of my commanders. I just want to chill out. I can just press one, and it will give him these orders, and that'll, that'll make him stay back instead of getting himself killed. I'm going to move around with my scout. I want to scout up here because I want to see what's in these other provinces. Basically these three provinces I have no idea what's there and I want to get that information. So um, I'm going to move him there. I'm going to attack here. Um, I'm also, I also want to move the, uh, my starting mage guy here with the, uh, with the idea being um, I want to pop a lab down here and start pumping out mages here. So I'm going to have him move with the army but um, one thing that's really convenient when you're moving troops onto a province you can hit you can select the province and hit Y and you'll see the troops that are moving there right so I'm just gonna have him cast spells and stay back I don't think he's gonna cast anything I hope he doesn't get himself in the front and killed that would be awful um, but yeah that's it for commander movement um, I'm gonna recruit now so with recruitment I want to do a skin shifters um, and I also want to do a sage and that's really all the money I have. So, yeah, that's all I really wanted to do. I wanted mass skin shifters because they're awesome. Um, they, they have good health, they have recuperation, but 
they also uh, shape shift into a bear form when they're when they're brought when they're killed first time. And that good and that health that form has like 60 health. We'll we'll probably see that in the next battle, and I'll show that to you guys during that battle. Um, but uh, yeah, I like the skin shifters. They're kind of bros. Um, but yeah, I guess one thing we can also look at is we can look at mercenaries. We know that um, we've got I uh, I think it's Satis. That's the banner. They're employing yeah, Satis is currently employing Urgek Beast Brother. And no one's hiring Drewfree swordsmen. Um, I don't really have the money. I kind of want to spend it on skin shifters, I guess. I mean, hypothetically, right? If no one outbids me, I could like drop the skin shifter recruitment and just recruit a mercenary squad here, and then uh, try to expand into one of these other areas, like expand up here with a mercenary squad, or maybe even here with a mercenary squad. Uh, I'm kind of fighting with myself. Do I want to do that? Because I risk the chance of getting outbid. Because what I'd be doing is I would have 209 gold in my treasury if I canceled these guys right. And then what I could do is I'll mercenaries. I can hire and then I can bid a variable amount of money. Whoever, uh, it'll, they'll serve the highest bidder. So if someone outbids me on this this turn, I'm going to lose the money. But if no one bids, I'll get them. On the other, so that's a risk. That's a risk I could take, or I could just go with the skin shifter plan. Um, so, I guess I don't really want to do it. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to take those stupid risks. I want to. I want to play safe. So I'm going skin shifters. Just keep it simple. Um, but yeah, I guess. Uh, one thing I kind of wanted to figure out is I wanted to figure out who hasn't profitized. So, because I guess how many people have profitized? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 people have profitized. There's more than 26 people in this game, which means several players did not profitize. Um, score graphs are available, so. You know, um, I don't know, I, I guess that's not really going to help us. I guess we can get a count here, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 27, so it's 30 people, which means 4 players did not profitize. But I feel like it would probably be a, uh, a exercise in, in patience that I'm not willing to exert, trying to figure out who hasn't profitized or not. Got a lot of thrones going on. 14 ascension points and we've got a lot of points available here you know I've got I've got this is probably a level one throne right next to me I don't I kind of don't want to try and mess around with it just gonna leave it alone for now um, I also have whiff of a candle over here a dark candle over here which means another player is probably close by definitely interesting I didn't notice that until just now but uh yeah I guess that's all I'm really doing this turn. I will see you guys in turn three. All right, welcome to turn three with Vanarus. So, got a message from Asphodel. Long has moss slumbered. Mortals live and die. Trees grow and fall. Gods are born and forgotten. Moss sees. Moss is peace. Trees understand peace. Mortals and gods both do not. They only know strife. Lie down in moss. Feel cool tranquility wash over you in the shade. Let the moss become you and you shall become moss. Only when all is moss will all know peace. Wow, that's nasty. I don't want to be moss. Man, okay, so we've got some more proclamations coming in. Kill Wolf for Castellan. Zakatl the Priest King. And Meshulan, the Refite Commander. Alright, so we got two battles. I'm scared. So this is the one I was talking about with skin shifters. They're kind of chilling out. The heavy cavalry are going to do some number on us, but um, ideally, won't be too horrible. There are actually some light cavalry here as well, but there's not too many. Um, they're throwing their spears out. 
Our sage is running forward for some reason. There's the first hit, killing several of our husk girls immediately. We killed. Oh, and we got a route. We got a route on that heavy cavalry. It's awesome. So, we lost a couple of husk girls. We now have a light infantry are coming in. The militia are coming in. Killed another husk girl. Oh well. I think these are husk girls. Yep, banner is husk girls. Losing a couple more guys. Yeah, I, I don't plan to like mass the husk girls. The husk girls are really good in numbers, and the basic starting 10 is not much. Our force is mostly going to consist of the much much tougher skin shifters and herdmen who are really impressive combat stats as well. None of the skin shifters have changed shape yet, mostly because the uh, militia, or the husk girls, took all the damage, and the independent armies are routed, so there's that turn. So that was, we lost six house girls total. Let's see how our pretender did in the water. So he's fighting a lot more stuff, but um, ideally it shouldn't matter. We're gonna get a bite in and get some more hits in. We're getting some good hits in, but um, he's regenerating the damage and he's already routed a lot. Yep, there we go. It's really the fear that's doing it. They're routing almost immediately, so. Another, another win under his belt, no afflictions. I'm looking out for that because the afflictions are going to be awful because he can't regenerate from afflictions like a nurse serpent can. Yep, we kill all those, kill all those. Unexpe unexpected event, a few fire gems, cool. Well, let's look at the map again. Um, I still kind of want to go in here. So... Yeah, I think we're just going to rinse and repeat. We're going to take out these Barbarians next. Still planning. I, I think this fight will be easier than the Heavy Cavalry one was. But, um... Let's see if anyone bought those Swordsmen. Yep, someone did buy them, so... And now we've got Fernandando's... <laughs> so... Once again, I don't, I don't really want to do Mercenaries. It's going to do Skin Shifters. Sage, and we can bank the rest of the money because we're gonna need to bank a little bit because I want to build the lab here next turn so I can start pumping out mages. So, ideally, that will work out for us. I uh, still don't know what's over here, but uh, what we can do, um, we got negative dominion over here, enemy dominion over here, and over here, so that's a little scary. Uh, that means someone might be close to me, but I don't know. Let's move up like this, and then planning to move over like this, and then we'll see what's over here, what's going on over here. I wonder if this is an enemy scout moving and spreading dominion, because that's a thing. Uh, if you prophetize your scout, if a scout can move through on um, lands that you don't occupy, and he'll continue to raise the dominion passively in those areas. So that's why I like to prophetize my scout, unless I'm going for a heavy sacred strategy and I want to have like a divine blessing on my sacreds. And in which case I would prophetize my general. But um, we got a blood guy here, earth, blood, and air. Yeah, we're just going to keep pumping those out. We're going to start researching now. I guess as far as my initial research goals go, gosh, um, I guess I want to do probably enchantments so I can get like the arrow stuff going on so I guess that was going to kind of be my strategy going into this is do arrow stuff so I guess enchantments good enchantments good for now um we could also do construction because uh if I get earth mazes I'm going to want dwarven hammers and plus I'm going to want this guy to eventually come back and start forging dwarven hammers um yeah I'm moving him up here. We're doing it. There's not much here. If we get like an easy route, I think it'll be good for us. Um, one of the things about uh, Triton Troopers is that they do have poison uh, attacks and we're resistant to poison. So, shouldn't be too horrible. Uh, I'm going to switch the research over to construction. Um, gosh, but yeah, I guess that's it with this turn. So... Um, yep, I'll see you guys in turn four. Hello everyone, welcome to turn four in our Vanarus playthrough. So, we got some new messages. Hello there, Ermor. 
Well, this isn't addressed to me at all. I see you own the lands 172 and 179 while both are not your capital. Do not head any farther towards my lands with your Hounds of Hades with an Earth 9 and Death 9 magicness. I hope we can all be friends. Pythium. Wow. Maybe they sent a creepy one. Even cooler nights nice to lie down in a sea moss. Also, normally the moss doesn't grow in a super sea. No deal. Nice. So we got two more battles. So this is us attacking the forest. Um, hopefully this goes well. I guess there's a lot of barbarians, so maybe it won't. But come on, archers. Get some good hits in. Oh, they got the first strike. And you can immediately see several of our skin shifters turning into bears. Oh, and they got a route. I think we lost several skin shifters, though. That's kind of a bummer. But it's neither here nor there. No. They're there to serve their purpose. Even if that means dying. So one thing to note is that this werebear, right, he has a bunch of afflictions. Chest wounds and never healing wounds. But since he has recuperation, he heals afflictions. So eventually, those will go away. And we lost one Huskar and one Skateshifter. Okay, fair enough. And this is our serpent attacking another sea area. With these sharks and such. Yeah, they're really not... They're actually barely doing anything to him. It's pretty funny. Yeah, there they go. I went close. So yeah, they, those battles both went fine. Unexpected event. One of Bayless is afraid of bandits. Okay, that's fair. So I guess here we banked enough money, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to build a lab here. So we're going to build the lab here, and we'll be able to build... Viedens and Viedmas here. They're both in F3 searchers, which is a little disappointing, but you know, whatever. We've got good magic paths that we want, such as these guys with a fire magic path. The chance of two fire being really good. So we can get a booster and boost them to three. I think we can get fire death on these guys, the sages. Fire death. Yep, we can definitely get fire death on these guys. So they can build that, that fire booster. And then they built two Phoenix Power and Flaming Arrows, and then I'll have a mate a Fire Four via Dune. So yeah, I think that's the plan. Um, where to actually attack? So this is Pelagius' capital. Um, so this is probably where the Black Candles were coming from. It's probably coming from Pelagia. But uh, I mean. I don't really, I'm not really interested in attacking him. Do I want to attack? No, I don't want to attack him. Because then that'll be, that'll be bad. <laughs> I'm not going to kill him. I'd rather have friends than enemies. It's like, I could probably take out nine enemy units, Knights of the Deeps. Maybe not, though. That's not, that's not risky. Especially without negative four, that uh, negative four Dominion means Python would have very little health. So yeah, let's actually just move around and attack more enemies. And attack more neutrals. So now that we've got that forest, I do kind of want him to uh, get reinforcements here. Though there won't be much. Um, our prophet got diseased. <laughs> That's awfully awful. I think that means, so I don't think he was diseased last turn, so I think that means there's a well of pestilence on this, on this square. Because a well of pestilence will disease people that stand on it. Or he could have just gotten extremely unlucky, I don't know. But that's my that's my theory right now. They got uh he got diseased from a well of pestilence. Oh well. Luckily, I can just build another scout and profit him when the time comes. So you're Stan. I'm gonna move him back. Do I wanna have him attack? He can still he can keep expanding. I, I kind of want to get a new expansion force coming up soon, though. So we can build a hearse. And build some more skin shifter herdmen. <laughs> this expansion force isn't going to be much. 12 people. Nah, eh, that should be enough. So, yeah, I guess that's my turn. Um... Our research, we're doing construction, I guess we're gonna get Dwarven Hammer stuff. See, I'm gonna, I'm, these, these turns are all gonna be uploaded on one video. I think I'm gonna do like five turns at a time. But, uh, 
there's been like multiple days in between each turn, so I'm just kind of fuzzy on details sometimes. What I was thinking when certain when I when I made certain decisions, but you know it's neither here nor there. Um, turns over. I'll see you guys in turn five. Hello everyone. Um, so I'm going to be making a little revision to my Dominion's four turn. Um, so I've recently been talking with Pelagia, who's up here, and uh, yeah, he DM'd me on the Discord channel, and he did not seem too happy about me taking. Uh, was essentially in his cap circle, which are these provinces that directly surround his uh, his capital, right? And I get that. When I took this, I did not realize his capital was right here. I, I saw black candles over here, but I didn't realize the capital would be right here on the coast like this. So what I told him was like, I'm pulling, I'm, I'm withdrawing, and you can have this province back. He wants this province back because it is in his cap circle. He obviously, you know, is entitled to it. I don't want to be, I don't want to be that guy. So what I'm going to do is, and, and he also urged me, so he said there's four underwater nations, so um, the water nations are going to be like province starved as it is. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop expanding in the water with my snake. I'm just going to move him onto the land right here. He'll take, he'll take this in my cap circle and I'm just going to have him move across the land. I, you know, I feel like these are, like, easy pickings for the most part, but, you know, I don't want to, like, piss players off, you know what I'm saying? You gotta stay on the player's good sides, especially since we're neighbors. I would rather have him be a friend than an enemy, you know? Unless I think I can kill him, and I, I don't know if I can or not. I, I don't really want to try. I just want to try and expand and see how I do. So... Basically, the only do thing I'm doing, I've already submitted my turn to Llama Server, but a lot of people haven't submitted their new turn yet, so I'm going to submit this as a revision. All I'm going to say is I'm, I'm just going to move my snake here. That's it. The rest is the same. So we're still doing our recruitment, still moving up here with that guy. Um, but yeah. Alright, for real this time, I'll see you guys in turn 5. Hello everyone, welcome to turn 5. So let's open up our messages. Pythium, Ermor, I see you have quickly gained a lot of provinces. Marignan. So Asphodel is in 3 or 4 moving north. He has a carrion dragon with D8 and 3. Also, Ermor with E8, D9, really? No tribeless, no CUA tribeless, no B9 or W9. He is far away, but as here, Ermor will destroy everything in his path. What is. I don't even know, dude. Dusty Duck the Malky. Alright. And two battles. Let's watch him. So I moved my snake back onto the land because I mentioned earlier I had a top of Pelagia. So he's taking land provinces now. Um, but yeah. Probably just gonna win this with fear. But he's doing some flying shards and not hitting anybody. There's one kill. There we go. So, always nice to check his health a little bit because sometimes you can suffer afflictions, and they'll suck. But, it looks like no, nothing of the sort is happening. He's out regenerating with damage handily, and eventually these guys will out. There we go. Yep. Easy. Easy. So let's go ahead and watch this battle. So this is our skin shifters and archers. So, got a couple of those guys hanging out. A lot of our husk girls have died. That's kind of a bummer. So this bear is getting real. He's getting real empty. He's getting real weak. There he goes. So there they go. So I lost one skin shifter. Took that battle. Took that province. Bad omens. That's bad. Great fertility festival. So incoming growth. That's cool. All right. You're you built the laboratory, I believe. So now we can build the agents. So we're just gonna have those on loop. And I'm gonna have you research. I'm doing that with Shift R. Oh, look at this. I see a Garthas right here. I mean, 
Not sure what I can really do about that. I guess it's nice to know he's there. I've got province events here already. Ah, uh, this guy's diseased. So I'm just gonna try and make do with him as much as I can. See what all these black candles are about. This army, I'm gonna. I'm scared of taking this throne, so I'm just gonna move this army up here. What's this army? We've got a couple skin shifters and a herdman. So that's our. It's gonna be our recruitment. There we go. So fill out. Uh, use up as much of our gold as possible. Um, we do have another commander here, the Vanarusi and Hearst, that we recruited last turn. So I can put these troops on him and possibly take this and then move my snake up here. But that's his cap circle, so. Do I want to screw with it? Ugh. Politics, man. Like, is Pelagia really gonna screw with, like, these land provinces? I. I really. I actually don't know. Like, is he gonna be upset if I take these provinces that are on the land in his cap circle? I guess. I have no idea. I'm like legit worried about like taking him off. Uh, this is hard because I can either I can move him here and take these provinces like that, or I could just be safer and move him here. You know what? I'll do that because then I can do a combined attack with my skin shifters and my snake on the throne try to take that over. I think that's gonna be my plan, so. You're just gonna hang out. Um, I have all my, I've made just researching. So we're at construction, we're gonna get construction level one soon, but we really don't care until we get level two. So we can start forging like dwarf hammers and such. If I get like a double earth guy, I don't think it's even possible to get a double earth guy. Let me look at the VA Dens. No, VA Dens can't get it. What about the VA Dens? Nope, they can't get it either. Yeah, I'm pretty screwed as far as Earth goes. Uh, I mean, it's a good thing I have five Earth paths on Python, but I want to use him to expand rather than, uh... I don't want him sitting forging items until later on, I guess. Um, because right now I want him to take as much as possible. So, once I've done this turn, I'm going to go ahead and compile the, uh, the five turns I'm doing, the five turns I've done, and put them on YouTube. Uh, but if anyone has any advice on if I should, like, take these provinces or not because I mean Pelagia is like aquatic so I don't know if he can even like really contest these but um yeah my inclination is to play as like safe as possible because I'm like super scared of everyone else maybe that's completely baseless but yeah um, yeah, just continuing to take my provinces. I want to get my cap circle online as quickly as possible so I can get as many resources funneled to it as possible, which is definitely going to involve taking over this province pretty soon. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see what that entails. Um, yeah, I think this is my turn. I'm doing research. This guy's just going to defend for now. Don't really want to do anything with these silly uh, water promises since I think Pelagia is going to want to take them at some point. But, you know, it's, it's whatever I suppose. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll see you guys in turn 6.